I'm your host, Duga Ashraf Darawish, and today I'm at Isbat University where we discovered a one uh, Ochean Dagaras who invented, you uh, can call it a machine. He will tell us more about it that's going to help the visual people that have been, uh, uh, the problems of seeing. You can call him, you can call them blind people, all those even having a problem of uh, impulse. So, uh, as we normally do, like our, share our programs, share for us. Also, those who feel like they would like to connect with us, can we leave your message on our email at successstrategiesafrica at gmail.com. We shall come to you, uh, those who are willing to collaborate with us in business, those who are looking for mentorship, those who are looking for invest, uh, invest, investment collaborations, any kind of a business in this world and Africa at large. Uh, let me give this chance to our guest today. He will tell us more what's coming. So welcome, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Asher. I, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, to start with, I am the developer of iBioRits, the device that you're seeing me wear. Uh, it's a device that's going to revolutionize how the blind people or how the visually impaired people uh, live, study and work in our communities. Uh, I am also the, develop the developer of uh, the Kasubo X series of helicopters, the very first helicopters to be made in Uganda. And my very first uh, helicopter was made and flew in, uh, made and flown in my S6 vacation here in Kampala, Uganda. I'm also de a developer of Liz, the electric uh, vehicles that have the potential of beating any electric uh, vehicle right now on the market. Uh, our cars will go miles and miles without ever being recharged again. The secret behind is a top company, secret. But anyway, above all today, the topic is the iBioRets. The device that I'm putting on is called iBioRets, and it's a topic that we have today. It's really very wonderful. And if at all you are to do research, I am sure over 1 million people in the, uh, in the world also have problems of blindness. So if you come up with such uh, an innovation, you have called it an eye broad. Eye bio rates. Eye bio rates. So can you tell us more? What is it? Why I, and why did you come up with this? To dive into this device, allow me to first start uh, by thanking my base, which is the Eastbach University where I am uh, uh, almost, grad where I'm graduating uh, f uh, with a bachelor's degree in artificial intelligence this very year, and I'm in my final two months of the, of the course. Uh, so I buy it, that the device that you see me have, uh, is an artificial, artificial intelligence powered device that has the ability to enable blind people to read books, see objects, and walk around their environments. Meaning, if the blind now can see, now they can walk around, and now they can read, meaning that they will now go to school and study, whichever course that we, with eyes, have been studying and denying them the chance to, now they can study these uh, courses. And they, with the ability to, 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 to recognize objects and, and still have the uh, independence, meaning they can now work uh, like we have all done, like you do, Mr. Ashraf, they can now walk. Uh, work, study, meaning that we are empowering them with a whole equivalent of a real natural eye. So you mean at the system where by have been seeing people with these walking sticks on the road yeah. and also being helped across the road in one or the other and also to being taken uh, to, uh, on the steps uh, on the, um, when, when they are entering the floors. You mean it's going to be just history? Exactly, that's going to be completely history and uh, to, to make it uh, a bit more clear, to paint a clear picture, I think uh, I think you will be. Uh, I think you will find a blind person shopping in a uh, doing shopping in the shopping mall, and you'll never recognize that they're blind. Over 52 trillion is uh, spent to these people who are blind, and those of those people who are uh, having problems you know, or visual problems. So if this comes out, I thought about whoever is watching us. Uh, to come and intervene in one or the other, how we can at least help. And this may save a lot of money for people. If 1.3 billion is paid 
uh, on people who have problems in Syria who are totally blind. I think this will be a solution uh, by a young man and Nagar and Nagar. So tell us, can you tell me what uh, motivated you to come up with this? Do you have a relative who is blind? Uh, do you have someone who has a problems in, in visual problems? What what motivated you to come up with this? Uh, the, the story, the motivation comes from very far. Uh, to start with, I, I have grown up with an elder brother who has visual problem. So he has real difficulties finding objects like uh, certain from the afternoon, he will have to really struggle to find objects around him. Uh, and uh, my, uh, my experience with him has always been uh, a, a very humbling one that you know, watching your elder brother who is supposed to, uh, you know, be the head of the, uh, your you leader, you know, you have to lead him, you have to guide him in what he was supposed to guide you in. That's not uh, an experience that anybody would love to have for, uh, uh, for the time that we've had. And also, you know, blindness is not just a matter of, uh, it's just not just about the person who is blind. Blindness or any form of visual impairment does not just affect the, 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 the single individual. It affects the all of us. Uh, let me give you a story of that brother, elder brother of mine. This is the one person who, uh, in his, uh, you know, he, he became blind or partially blind after the age of 10. But before he was 10, in school, he used to be the best guy in, in school. Like, he used to be the best in his class. So, at home, he always received that praise that he was, you know, going to be the next big thing of the family. But when he turned 10 and the sight was taken, the family had to lose that whole hope. So just imagine the entire family losing hope. Now, that's just how, that's just like a pinch of how much it affects uh, the people in the society. Now, when this person is uh, visually impaired or now blind, now, there must be somebody, or a member of the family, has to be assigned to take care of this person. You have to be there with them full time, guide them in whatever thing they will do, meaning that you as a person who has been assigned that duty, now your life has to be cancelled. You definitely, you have to live your entire life catering for this person. One, the blind person is now completely dependent on you. You need to do everything for them. But the most important is that you yourself as a person now have to watch your life fly by. Now, now we have, the, the World Health Organization says that we have about 2.2 billion people globally who are, who are blind. So, if, just, just look at that number. It's too big. So imagine we have 2 billion, but now multiply that by 4, to get the number of people who are rendered jobless, who are rendered uh, uh, non-productive because they have to take care of these blind people. So it's not just a matter of the, the visually impaired person, but a whole community is affected. So was there any uh, someone who mentored you in this? Yes, uh, uh, let, let me start. The, the story of mentorship comes way back from, the, from Muri, so I call it Muri. Uh, by the way, I am a proud Murian. To all the Murians, uh, Murians out there, I'm a proud Murian. Muri made us. Uh, the mentorship that Muri gave me into leadership was a big one. Muri taught us that it's not about us, it's about the society. Uh, we call ourselves the gentlemen. And the culture that they told us was that it's not about you all the time. And they said that if you want to grow uh, in whichever aspect of life that you want, if you start focusing more on yourself, you lose the value in yourself. But if you focus on other people, and you build other people, and you create value in other people, then the value you created in the people is now your value. That's why they say that uh, company owners like Elon Musk, right now his value can be like maybe let's say 200 billion US dollars. But if you look at that value, it's not actually liquid value that Elon Musk can pull out of his pocket and give to you but it's the value of his creation, the value of the impact he is creating in the society. And we created that aspect in us that we should look at society first. How time we as Africans, we start focusing on our own, 
how can we build it? So that has, I know it took you a lot of time to come up with this. Yeah. Uh, it, very many people may want to know what, uh, what it, take, uh, it, it took you to come up with this. And how long was it? Yes, uh, it's not been that smooth sail. It's not, it's not an easy thing. But still, we want to you know, thank Eastport University for providing this course in uh, specific, in specific, in, in specific that AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning, is here at this point. And it's been a powerful tool. Without AI, probably we wouldn't have this. So, but uh, the production, the development stage was not that easy. Uh, it's been a year now. It's been a year now in the, in the making. Uh, the, develop, the inception stage to the prototyping stage was about eight months, starting from 2021. Yes, so we did it, we made it, came out, and then we had it last year, and uh, we had to stop for a while as we, we did some more researching. But yes, uh, roughly about a year now. Talk about the costs. Yeah. But uh, do you think if I told there's someone at least to help you yeah. and come up with more of that and also someone who can support you one or the other? Because very many people have seen you from our political success in this Africa. Would you welcome this? Yeah, I think I'm very open to. Uh, assistance and we we have to be frankly uh, bold enough and you know open honest and say that yes right now we need serious financial assistance like you can see uh, the device right now you can see the size uh, it's not where we want to be this is not our vision our vision is a well precise uh, and uh, a very small uh, device so that the weight is minimum and we want comfort from the users and we want to build in uh, a good lasting battery so that maybe they can use it for a whole day before they can recharge. If we can hit two days before the next recharge, that's a good thing. But this is not our vision, this is not where we want to be. Uh, right now, I can say that we're using very rudimentary uh, technologies to, to make, for example, the casing. This is made using local in-home uh, plastic molding. I think it would be better if we had like a 3D printer. So yes, uh, a good call out would be for somebody to help us buy the 3D printer. And also the, the printing of the board inside. This board is not where we want to be. This board is uh, limited in capacity. It's processing, it's RAM is only 512 MBs. But our vision is to have it run in real time with about maybe 4 GB of RAM. That requires that we have our custom board. And for us to develop and print these custom boards, we really need money. So I would call out to anybody out there who would love to support us. We are open to seed funding. Please do support uh, us. These are local innovations that are seeking to solve local challenges. And we hope to, to help not just Ugandans, but to expand to East Africa, cover the African continent, and also go out there. Because the, the challenge of blindness is not just about Ugandans. They are uh, blind people globally. They are visually impaired people globally. So if we are solving uh, a problem, we're not just going to be selfish and say we're going to solve Ugandan problem only. We want to solve the whole thing. You have know, heard it from the horse's mouse, you know, uh, the data of the eye, you know. Uh, he has a vision of helping the world, at least, to cover the reality. Those who have the problems of repair, uh, totally blind, at least to live a normal life. I'm very sure, uh, according to the research experts of the disability, say the technology and these solutions uh, has a long way to go, not, not only in terms of details, but also in integration. So I think as Success Strategies Africa, uh, whoever is watching us, Uganda, USA, uh, Germany, I know we have very many people that we are collaborating with us. He is a young, intelligent man. In his introduction, he just stated some of the things that he has come up with. But if at all we come up and we, uh, we say it's now hard time uh, to focus on Douglas, I think this can also be a worldwide uh, solution.
to, to the people who are having such a problem of seeing. Uh, Douglas, have you ever been there and regret of giving up with, uh, on your dream? Yeah, there are many times because I, I Biorect is not the first one. Uh, I Biorect is just one of them, like I made mention, I Biorect is one. The Kasubo X helicopters is one. And last year we had a huge challenge. Our hangar where we keep the helicopters was attacked by some ill-intended people who cut cut the helicopter. And now, because me being a student and then the money we used in all the process was generated from home, and now the home says, hey, we, we, we are out of money for, for that. Maybe you look for somebody else. And watching the helicopter stay there unattended to for all these whiles just because I can't have some money. It's, not, it's more than painful. And uh, then we have also Liz, uh, the electric cars that we started on, and we had to leave it halfway after proving the concept working, and then we have to leave it halfway there. So it's, it's a huge pain to, to, you know, when you have the vision and you have this constraint that just cannot let you reach the goal, it's a huge one. So once again, it's, a, it's an opportunity that I would love to use to call out on uh, the people watching us from wherever they are. Uh, please, your assistance is highly welcomed and we will really be uh, grateful to, to you know, have your assistance and have these innovations come to life. That's one way I want to know uh, how this works. Because, uh, you know, imagination is very, uh, it's very difficult to explain. Because yeah. if someone's putting on uh, that gadget of yours, uh, that you think that's going to have very many people uh, live in a normal life, mm -hmm. and it's in, your, in your statement you say it would be very hard want to tell that that person is blind, if mm -hmm. at all reach to, to the goals that you, we want. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain more about uh, the gadget? Yes, yes. so I buy rates, it's uh, like you see, all you have to do is put, uh, wear it up like you do where you are the, your eyeglasses. And uh, to use it really, you don't need any formal lesson on how to use it. There's no technicality that you need to learn to use it. All you have to do is put it on. It has a camera right here and then the earpiece right coming to your ear there. And all you have to do is, uh, for example, if I want to know what is in front of me right here, I could just ask it what's this or what's in front of me and uh, it employs its uh, uh, algorithms of artificial intelligence uh, that using computer vision it tells me what exactly this is which is a glass of uh, which is a bottle of water uh, if I want to know what uh, 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 brand I could just ask it hey read this for me and it will tell me this is from Azu, Azu water maybe if I turn here uh, this is Eastbat logo. You will probably read to me that hey, it's branded Eastbat University, but it's what a water bottle. And if I ask, if I looked at uh, Mr. Ashraf and I asked it, hey, what is this? It will tell me a gentleman is sitting in front of you. And if I asked it to describe the gentleman, it probably would tell me it's a gentleman putting this kind of shirt with a tie like this. So it will be like a communication between you and the device. So are you concerned about the language? Yes, uh, the, the, the question of the language is, uh, is an important one. Uh, the blind people, if you're talking about the blind people, these are people that you should uh, generally take the assumption that they do not understand English in the local Ugandan context, even in the East African context. Uh, you shouldn't assume that they know English. So we are in the process of integrating Luganda into this device. So the device will actually use the local languages so the first one we're starting with is Luganda. Then we are going to uh, the Luo languages so that the Luo societies can also use it. And then the next language will be Kiswahili for the, East Af for the other East African uh, colleagues of ours. So right now we're doing the language compilation to make this device able to understand uh, Luganda, Kiswahili, and Luo. And by the way, this device, uh, you don't need to connect to any, any network to use it. All the language synthesis happens offline, right here. All the recognition and identification happen completely offline. And the other, maybe the other aspect I forgot is that 
with uh, even to read a newspaper or to read any book, I just have to tell you, hey, read for me this. And I just have to pick the device, uh, the, the, the paper, and hold it just like any normal person and have it read. So it does not, you don't need data anywhere in this device. But we also have, uh, uh, we also consider the, the school setting where we give these devices to pupils or students. Uh, and then we want them to also access books. So we, we, we decided that we, for that uh, use case, we will connect the device to a local area network where the books will be stored online. And then all that the student has to do to access the school syllabus or the class notes is just to tell the device, hey, read for me, uh, uh, let's say, SST. Or, or let's say, read for me uh, this chapter from uh, East African history. That's in history uh, secondary school. Then the device should go online to the local server, pick the book from there, find the chapter, and read it out to you. That's how it's going to come in to, to you know, expand the education sector and improve the blind education and encourage education among the blind people. Exactly. It's really very interesting. I just mentioned about uh, building this into schools uh, which are blind. Seven years back, you can experience a tough moment, a sad moment. We have uh, very many people uh, in a blind school in Sanama School, in uh, Mkono, uh, all, uh, went in accident or fire. So if at all that has come up with such uh, innovative machine to help such uh, blind students, I think it's a way to go digitally. It's a way to go technologically. So that is, I want to know. Uh, I know this has inspired very many of us. And how can youth today, uh, according to you, to people who have interacted, uh, how can they, who are, who are watching us through our channels, Success Strategies Africa, uh, prepare themselves for success? I think that uh, the, the idea of success should come from, uh, people should adopt it from a very early stage, yeah? That, uh, I, I think that before we talk to the, to the individual uh, youths out there, we should take it as the role of the society at large. I think society has a huge role to play in uh, encouraging youth into technological field, into innovation. Because, first of all, it's important to notice that the environment in which you live has a huge influence in what you become or who you become. Uh, you know, society has a huge role in expanding our imagination. So a positive society that encourages the, 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 the youth to, to, to you know, go out wild and imagine and, 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 and you know, construct and create is, is going to be a, a good society for the youth to develop. Secondly, now it comes down to you as an individual youth. It's very important to seek out skills. I would employ all the youth out there. Don't sit where you are. Don't be comfortable when you don't have the skills. You, you, you must have cross, you know, skills that cross, cut across all the fields. Don't be limited to just uh, maybe metal fabrication skills or electrical engineering skills or plumbing. Even the soft skills, even the skills of addressing people is very important. So as a, as a youth, I think it's very important for you to be hungry to learn. As you wind up our uh, program today, what are you grateful for today? Uh, first of all, uh, I am very grateful that Ispot gave us this opportunity uh, to be here. Uh, not everybody has gotten the opportunity to be here at Ispot. And you've had people cry about uh, expired courses. None of our courses here at Ispot is expired. Uh, Ispot does research constantly to make sure that our courses are improved every other two semesters. And Actually, me now I'm in semester six, but the, the things that people studying artificial intel intelligence in first semester are doing are completely new to me. So it's always, you know, an update after update. So I'm grateful to ESPAT for having us here. And also, uh, then Success Stories Africa, the biggest hand in influencing the society. I think. I am very grateful to Success Strategies Africa. Uh, it's such a huge opportunity and I know that we are reaching a whole, uh, you know, an explosive audience. And I know that from this uh, publication that you're doing will come a lot of things. 
uh, collaborations, business opportunities, and you know, all the amazing opportunities. And uh, I'm very grateful to you and your entire team. And finally, for God for you know, uh, allowing us to be here today. Uh, whoever is watching us, continue subscribing, continue sharing Success Strategies Africa, continue to share. Very many people are watching us from different countries. Uh, those who do who see your first time to watch us, just go to Success Strategies Africa uh, on Facebook, LinkedIn. We are at Eastbach University with Douglas on uh, the Oh, uh, he has a lot for us, but I think if it's, uh, if at all we embrace him, as we say, uh, I think this is a solution for the people who have been uh, probably not, uh, impaired also, those who are totally blind. So now it's high time to also try to make these people's dream, because one of the, our vision in Success in this Africa is to make people's dream come true. So however much you can start with small, uh, when you look into Africa worldwide, uh, it's very easy to start, but finishing is sometimes a problem. And when it comes to technology, we really need a lot of help and your support. Uh, according to what he has said, so that as we wind up, uh, one may want to know, yes, sir. how do you handle your day most so? Because for last, don't look at only the innovations, but also look at someone who's focused on his dreams. Well, uh, how is your... Money. My, my days are kind of structured in a good way that, uh, you know, favors me. Uh, I have school and innovation. So uh, here at campus, I come, I think, uh, three days a week, which is a good thing for me to focus on the innovation, uh, innovations that I do. So I think that's, uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's basically it. Uh, I would like to touch and feel uh, the eyebrows so that I really also have that opportunity. You may never know, at least one day, one time in history, I may not be there at least as the camera guy will be hard capturing those moments. Uh, who one day, one time, if I tell it by, I can uh, have a look on it if at all it is possible. This device has the potential to revolutionize how the blind people will work, live, and integrate in our society. Secondly, uh, to make that possible, to make this dream come to them, we need support. And that should be our very honest call out, that we need support to get this out there. And there's no any other way we can get it out there, unless we have the support. Thank you so much for having me, Mr. Ashraf. And uh, I call upon our viewers, audience from all, all over the world, this is an opportunity for them to, you know, have a solution given down the line. At Success Strategies Africa, we say you only fail when you quit. I'm really impressed by Douglas, who is a focused man. He has come up with very many innovations, but he is not uh, really focused on the society. I also take this opportunity to thank the University of Isbat, uh, such young intelligent people, embracing them, giving them knowledge more on um, how can they and how can they bring their dreams through. Uh, I sign up by requesting each and everybody. Uh, please like, share, comment. We also have services at Success Strategies Africa, uh, the business collaborations, mentorship, uh, business coaching, mindset changing, investment consultants. I don't wait. Uh, only. Opportunities come for those who are prepared. I remain Guga Ashraf Darawish, Success Strategies Africa. Mm -hmm.